Okay, in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this smart power strip. So this is from Casa Smart, which is part of TP-Link. And this is basically a, a six outlet Wi-Fi power strip that can be integrated into Home Assistant. Now, um, I'm going to do a little bit of a teardown, but not fully on this thing, because based on the information I've seen online, I am not the first person to, to look at these. Um, inside of this is actually a Qualcomm uh, communications chip, so you can't flash ESP home to this, but you can actually get these things set up without using the CASA app, which means uh, if you kind of do a hacky thing, you can get this thing set up without needing an account or anything. Um, but first, let's, uh, let's look at what this thing does. So again, it's got six outlets. Each one of these is going to be individually controlled. Um, it's got some USB charging also, but that's not really what I need it for. I'm going to be using this thing in my server closet, and I've got two of them because the other one I'm going to be putting next to my AV system in the living room. Um, because in addition to each plug being individually switched, they also allow for individual power monitoring. So. Um, Within Home Assistant, you can actually get power metering off of every plug individually. So let's open this thing up. All right, so there's not really much in the packaging. There's the instructions. It's just a simple little card that says download the app. We will not be doing that. Um, and then here's the power strip. I will say on the power strip, it's not the most robust thing in the world uh, as far as feeling it, but uh, you know, it, it doesn't feel too cheap either. We've got a fairly good cord on here. This is 14 gauge wire. So that's actually a pretty stout little cable there. Um, it's not exceptionally long. You know, I'd say like a one meter cable. So, you know, not the longest cord if you need something with a really long cord, but it'll do the job. Um, it also has a, a 45 degree angled plug. So um, whenever you go to plug it in, it does come off at an angle. So it's not gonna be too difficult to integrate uh, if you've got other things plugged into the outlet. Um, now, as far as getting this thing open, on the back, you actually have to go in under the rubber feet here, and we will find screws underneath these rubber feet. So we've got two there, and they are Torx, so that's gonna be interesting to see uh, getting Torx, because they're kind of deep holes, and they are little Torx drivers. Uh, within that. So that one's going to be easy. Uh, these two down here, that's going to be a little tricky. So uh, one moment, I'll be right back. I'll grab some uh, some Torx. We'll see if we can get down in there. All right, so it looks like these screws are T9, and I can just, if I hang that bit out all the way on my little mini tool here, I think I can just get it in there. You know, as I'm looking here on the back, I do not think this is UL listed, made in Vietnam, yeah, Intertech. I, I don't see a UL listing on this, so uh, for anybody that's concerned about that, just FYI, all these screws are identical, so it doesn't really matter if you mix them up. All right, well, I, I was worried for a second that they had glued this. Uh, it turns out it's just pretty stout clips, so... I ought to be able to get this thing open without too much trouble. But they sure did use some strong clips. I'll give them that. Okay, we just got her cracked open here. So get our look inside. And there we are. So after getting this thing open, it does look quite a bit different than I expected. And you may wonder, you know, how did I expect anything? Um, there's some FCC documentation. Whenever these things, you know, get produced, they have to go through some validation, um, some RF testing. And the FCC, there are some photos that you can find of the internals. But this one seems to be quite a bit different from the one that's in the FCC photos. Uh, they're using uh, different processor, different Wi-Fi, they're using different chips for the energy metering. So um, yeah, I, I was kind of surprised. It, it looks like a different layout. Some of the components are different. So yeah, it, all I'm saying is I, it wasn't what I expected. So basically what's happening is on the input side, you do have some protection over here, but look, it says surge protector. I don't know how much. You got some fuses and I think some varistors or something over here. And that's what's handling all of that. 
your main switch. So you're lining your neutral or down here on the bottom and you can see these big vertical copper standoff rails, which that's kind of interesting. Um, on the underneath, you've got a big copper rail here and that's for the ground. Um, what else? The switching each plug is controlled by its own individual relay. Your buttons are down here and those basically these uh, buttons just transfer. Uh, and it looks like uh, simple little welded in plastic buttons and the spring assembly is really interesting because it just looks like, uh, yeah, uh, they basically just plastic welded uh, those things in. And so the spring is just a compliance mechanism in the plastic. So that's interesting um, with a little bit of feedback, I guess. Yeah, from the button. Uh, the low voltage power supplies are kind of neat because there's two of them. So for the USB over here, uh, that is actually totally separate. So uh, there's a couple of traces. Let me see if I zoom in here. Uh, you'll see these two traces coming over to probably a, a bridge rectifier. And then all of this is totally separate from the rest of the circuit. And so uh, this little flyback uh, power converter here with its controller chip on the back. Um, and that's what's powering these three USB ports. Now let me, I got a flashlight, so let me show you uh, how you can tell if these are separate. If I get a flashlight, you'll see starting from the bottom, no traces in between until you get up here at the top. And so you'll see just that line in the neutral coming over. Uh, there is a separate little fuse here. Um, so right here, there is a fuse um, for the low voltage side uh, for these USB ports. Now what's again, important to point out, uh, since they're totally separate, you're not gonna have any communication uh, to anything through those ports. Now, I mentioned that there are two power supplies. So the microcontroller is actually up here and it's uh, a Chinese manufacturer that I'd never heard of before. It's just a, a little simple, I think it's even an eight bit uh, microcontroller. And then here in the middle of all this nonsense is a Realtek chip. Um, and so that's what's handling the Wi-Fi. It's got a little memory module here. And if I tilt this thing, you'll see the little Wi-Fi antenna right there. So all of this gets its power from a little power section here at the top. Um, I'm guessing that since these are fairly low power, they went with a very different power supply. And so uh, the USB is totally separate with a, a flyback transformer and everything. And I guess that's because it needs to deliver uh, higher power levels. And this seems to be a more integrated solution um, because there's just a little switching controller here. Uh, and I guess that's it, right? There's, you know, maybe there's this inductor here is handling like transformer duties. I, I'm not exactly sure. I, I'm not real good on power supply, uh, AC to DC converters or anything like that. Um, on the bottom here, you'll see these chips and that's the power metering. So there's one of these for each pair and basically each one of these power metering ICs can handle two channels of power metering. Um, and then you got your buttons and that's pretty much the layout of this thing. It's actually not overly complicated. The, uh, the energy metering on the back, uh, let's see if we can point that out. On the back, you'll see there's a bunch of sense resistors, one for each plug. And that's basically how they're handling uh, the energy metering for the current monitoring. I don't know that there'd be a lot of opportunity to reprogram this thing. Um, there are some pin pads up here. So, you know, in theory, I guess you could try to reprogram this thing. But again, uh, I've never really heard of the, the microcontroller chip. Uh, so I don't really know anything about it or whether reprogramming is even possible. But that's the uh, that's the layout of this thing. And uh, from here on, now that we've kind of, you know, looked under the skirt a little bit, uh, I'll show you how you can get this thing integrated into Home Assistant without needing to actually use the COS app. Because in order to get this thing set up through the COS app, you gotta set up an account with TP-Link and who wants to do that just to get this device hooked up to their Wi-Fi. Um, so let's move over to the computer. Okay, so we're going to get the power strip set up in Home Assistant, and we're gonna be bypassing the requirement to use a TP-Link app or to have an account, okay? 
So what you do need is a Python script that you can find on GitHub. I will put the link to this GitHub down in the description below. So basically we want to download this py file, this py file to our computer. So if we click over into it and then we can just download the raw file. Okay, and once you've got that file downloaded, let's go back out and look at the instructions. So if we scroll down to the setup, there's okay, initial setup. Okay, so the first thing is you need to plug the power strip in and make sure that it's powered up and that should take a few seconds, not long at all. It should just come on. Next up, you need to connect to the Wi-Fi that the power strip will be putting out. It's going to be basically advertising itself as an access point. So look in your Wi-Fi for a connection called TP-Link power strip with some numbers and it's going to have a default IP address of 192.168.0.1. Okay, so here's where now we need the script. So if you don't have Python, download and install Python. Okay, you do probably want version past three. I've got version 3.9, um, and I am using IDLE, I-D-L-E, which is just a Python IDE. It should come with Python whenever you install it, but if not, just download IDLE, which again, it's just an IDE for Python. So you're going to go and find um, where you downloaded that file, that PI file, and just open it up. And once you've got it opened up, just run that module. Okay, now at this point, we're going to scroll down. It says, use the blow code to connect to your Wi-Fi network. And this is really all you've got to do. Once we get the device on the Wi-Fi, then Home Assistant can take over because it will be able to see it and talk to it. So we run the first over in our shell, and then we grab the second. And here, you're going to need to modify this and put in your SSD and put in your password. So where it says, my SSD, um, just delete this and put in your SSD and where it says my PSK, just put in your password and then run this whole command. So basically paste it in here and then edit these and then run it. And so once you do that, then we're going to go into Home Assistant. So I'm going to run this and then go into Home Assistant. Now, after running this, you should lose connection because the, uh, the power strip will basically disconnect from your computer and then you should start seeing it on your uh, your Wi-Fi network for your house. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is on um, Home Assistant, add the TP-Link smart home integration. Now, I've already done this because I've already got one of these devices set up, but basically just go into add integration and then TP-Link, and you're looking for the smart home, right? So you click on smart home. Once you get to this and it says, hey, you know, host, you can just leave that empty and just hit submit and it will start finding your device. Okay, so there we go. There's my device. It has found it. So I hit submit and that's it. You can assign it to an area if you want, but now I've got two devices. And if I go in, here's my new power strip and you'll see all of my plugs that I can switch on and off. And then all of the monitoring information, power voltage, everything else. And that's it. That's all you got to do. Um, that is the end of the setup in Home Assistant. Now you can use this thing as any other device. Okay, well, that's going to wrap this one up. You should at this point have this thing set up in Home Assistant. And at that point, you can just use it as normal. Um, so, you know, I've found out interesting things as I've already been using one of these, such as, you know, my home security system pulls about 100 watts uh, constantly. And that's because, well, it's PoE. It's got an integrated switch. It's a Windows server. It's got four hard drives spinning at all times. It's powering six different cameras. Um, so, you know, I'm kind of surprised that 100 watts is capable of doing all that. My internet gateway that um, basically runs a pie hole and everything else, it's pulling about 30 watts all the time. Um, you know, power monitoring is a very useful feature, and I've come to appreciate having that type of monitoring capability because it really lets me figure out what's drawing power in my house and you know i can reduce consumption that way pretty easily so at this point that's all i got to say about this one if you've got any feedback or comments as always just feel free to leave them down below otherwise i appreciate your time thanks